Yo, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Jeff, aka Beer Nation. Today we're going to discuss how to overclock your GPU to get better frames per second in Warzone. Before we jump into today's video, if you like this content, make sure you hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, hit the notification bell, and if you have any recommendations for videos, drop them in the comment section below. So let's jump right into it. So what exactly is overclocking? Overclocking is the process of increasing a component's clock speed, in this case your GPU, to increase the rate at which it runs. Think of it as tuning the computer in your car. You're going to increase the horsepower without adding any extra components to the car. The same process can be applied to your CPU as well, but for today's video, we're just going to focus solely on the graphics card. One disclaimer and question that a lot of people ask is, is overclocking safe? And the answer is yes. With today's components, it's very safe. While overclocking does stress and add heat to your components, those components have fail safes in place to make sure that you do not damage them. The worst case scenario is that you're going to have some freezing, some black screens, maybe some artifacts, maybe some little bit of instability with your computer. That's all set by restarting your computer and starting from scratch. So if you have an overclock that's not working, all you have to do is go back to your system, to your program, and you go dial it back a little bit, and then you can start back over. So in order to overclock, you're gonna need an overclocking tool for your GPU. And there's two tools that I recommend. The first being MSI Afterburner. This is gonna work for basically every single graphics card out there. But if you're an EVGA graphics card user like myself, I'm gonna use their Precision X1 program, which I'm gonna be showing here. But the fundamentals are basically the same. How it's used is the same. I've had different clocks with both of these programs, so the, the end result was a little bit different, but the fundamentals are still the same and you can apply this to both of them. In addition to your actual overclocking tool, I would recommend getting a program to benchmark as well. The industry standard is 3D Mark, which I'll pull up later in the video. There's other options out there as well to help you benchmark your actual results. You can go ahead and jump into the game that you usually play like Warzone and play for an hour to do it as well. I find going in the 3D Mark, running those benchmark tests, making sure not, nothing's crashing is much faster than adjusting your clock, going in for an hour, adjusting your clock and doing the same and rinsing and repeating. It's gonna save you a bunch of time. It's not necessarily apples to apples, like going in and running the game for a long period of time is a much better source of truth than going through these 3D marks and 3D bench tests. But you know what, it's a good baseline. It's gonna save you a ton of time. So here's the 3D Mark benchmarking tool. Uh, if you jump in, you can see that there's a bunch of different benchmarks that you can do. If you download the free version, you're actually gonna be able to go in and do the Time Spy one for free. If you jump into here, there's one thing I do want to note. If you uncheck this demo, it's gonna save you a ton of time. It's by default with the demo on. It's gonna go through the demo. It takes like two minutes, then it's gonna go through the test. So every time you're running this benchmark test, which trust me, it's gonna be several times, if not more, you're gonna have to go through the demo, make sure you uncheck it and you can go ahead and run it. What it's actually gonna do is run a graphics test and a CPU test, so you get an overall overview of how your overall system's working. If you wanna do a custom run, which I do not believe is available within the free version, you can actually remove the CPU test and you can just focus on your graphics test. If you're benchmarking your CPU, you can turn these off and go for the CPU test, whatever works for you. Jumping back to the overclocking tool itself, there's a couple different sliders that are in here and these are really important to pay attention to because this is how you're actually gonna overclock your GPU. So the first one in the middle is the actual GPU chip clock. And this is the first one you're gonna to be toying with. This is the first one you're gonna be increasing. Uh, the next one over here on the left is the memory clock. That's the second most important one. You're gonna be increasing that as well. Um, one recommendation, you do not wanna increase these both at the same time. You wanna make sure you're isolating the test and you're trying to find any little reason why your system is not stable, why it's freezing, why it may be crashing. So you wanna test these both individually. The last one we have over here is the power one, and this is going to be the last one we're going to adjust. This is after we're getting our initial clocks where we're testing our system. We, we finally hit the limits and now we're going to be able to add more power because essentially what this is going to do is you need more power to have your actual system overclock, your GPU overclock. It's going to be power hungry and you're going to be able to feed it that and you're going to be able to limit the temperatures, limit the power, um, add more power and be able to really fine tune it. So the last thing to note here is the fan speed. You can actually go through and you can customize this based on how you want. My GPU has three fans, so I can go ahead and go one, two, three. I can put these up to any certain percentage. I find the easiest way to do this in Precision X1 is to actually go over. I'll set my fan to aggressive. If you don't have this option, if you're going through MSI Afterburner, my recommendation is to start with all your fans at 100%. Yes, it's gonna be loud, but this is gonna show you the true overclock of your system. And there's certain thresholds with those fans that your fan is actually gonna draw more power and create more heat than it's gonna be able to reduce. So you wanna find that fine tuned spot. Personally, when I'm looking at my system, it's running around 68 to 75% of my fan speed, even if it's on auto. So I find that's a good sweet spot, but I recommend testing at 100 first, backing off and really fine tuning it because this is a really fine tuned process. I mean, for lack of a better term, there's a lot of fiddling around. And if you really wanna find the perfect overclock, fiddling with this is gonna be the best way to go. 
So the first step here is to go ahead and do an initial overclock, a small one, just to make sure that your components are indeed able to be overclocked. Not all GPUs are equal. Not all GPUs are able to be overclocked. Depends on what kind of GPU you're running, how old that GPU is, Silicon Lottery. There's a lot of things that involve with this and like, you just wanna start in small increments and test it from there. Yes, you do have the fail safes in place to make sure you don't destroy your card or your computer, but still I recommend starting slow. So the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and do a five to 10% increase. And then we're gonna go into 3D Mark and actually run a benchmark test. I recommend running one in the first place prior to doing every overclocking, just to make sure, hey, here's my baseline. Maybe even run two to make sure you're getting positive results. Then go ahead and do a small increase. So the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and actually boost our memory clock right here. And what we're going to do is increase it by 100. We'll jump back over to 3D Mark and run another test. This is just a good initial test to say, hey, like, let's push my equipment a little bit. Let's see what's going on. And then we can go ahead and increase from there. Also, full disclosure, the 3D Mark bench test is not necessarily an apples to apples comparison of what's going to happen when you run Warzone. You have to go in and you test this. It's going to say, hey, well, is this stable? Let's go back in the war zone. Let's run the game for an hour. Let's run it for two hours. Let's make sure that it's stable. If you have any crashes or anything like that, maybe you have to back off on your clock a little bit. It's a good baseline, but it's not necessarily going to equate to actually what's going to happen when you go into your game. So now that we have an initial overclock, what we're going to do is we're going to focus solely on the GPU chip. We want to forget the memory overclock, a little bit of boosting that you did. Let's not touch it. We're going to leave it in place. We're going to focus solely on the GPU chip. What we're going to do is we're going to solely increase this by 10, 15% until we get to a point where the actual stability of the computer is actually going to crash or it's going to freeze or it's going to crash the 3D mark test. That's the point where you know you've hit the limit. You have to restart everything and you're going to back it off by 10 or 20%. And you know what? This is going to get you a good point and then you can go in and you can focus on the memory overclock. We want to make sure that these are completely separate because if you're increasing them both at the same time, you're not necessarily going to know what's going to be failing your system, what's going to be affecting things. You want to do one test at a time and really focus on that. So now that we've done a bunch of testing on our GPU clock, our core clock, and we've done our memory clock, so we finally got everything to a place where it's it's stable, it's running well, there's no crashes, we can go ahead and increase the power on our overall GPU. And what you're going to do is this slider right here, we can go ahead and we can increase this all the way to the max. In my case, it's going to go from 100% to 111%. And that's going to allow more voltage to go to the graphics card and essentially raise the ceiling of your current overclock. So what we can do is we'll go back. We can actually go through here. And we can increase this. We can increase it to a point where we're actually going to be doing a little bit more power, a little bit more memory power, and that's going to help increase performance even more. Um, as goes with the original testing, I recommend starting with your core of your GPU first right here and then increasing the memory. So for my current clock right now, I'm currently at a thousand for my memory. I'm at 105 for my GPU and I have my power all the way set to max. Um, I also increased my voltage all the way to 100. I found that I have not seen any difference in performance between 0 and 100. I haven't seen any temperature raises, but I raised this to 100 just based on some of the recommendations I read online. I found that it works for me. This is the current clock that I'm running. I find that it's going to be a nice 5 to 10% boost in performance depending on the game. For Warzone specifically, I'm getting anywhere between 2 to 6% an increase in performance, but you know what? That equates out to anywhere between 5 to 10 frames per second for something that was super simple, so I really can't complain. I want to go over some common misconceptions and mistakes that people run into when they're overclocking. The first being that no one's equipment is the same. Even if you have the exact same PC as I do, same case, same motherboard, same cooler, everything, same GPU, same model, make, you have to realize that there's something called the silicon lottery and that no two gpus are the same this is means that down at the macro level and the micro level even at the microscopic level that there's differences in those chips and your gpu even though it's the same make and model as mine might get better or worse performance based on that it's, it might be marginal but you know what it's going to happen like silicon rally is a real thing another thing you have to be aware of is your system like no two systems are the same no two cards are the same you have to really focus on the card that you have Look at the baseline statistics and increase from there and do it slowly. The more time you spend testing and slowly incrementing, you're going to get less frustrated. You're going to find the exact fine tuned performance. You might even find that your card right out of the box is as tuned as it can possibly be. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it happens. Like you might not be able to overclock at all. The second thing you need to keep in mind is that certain components of your computer, including the CPU, can bottleneck your overall GPU performance. So what is bottlenecking? Bottlenecking is the limitation that's produced by another CPU component, or excuse me, another PC component that affects the overall performance of the component you're trying to overclock. In this case, 
A CPU, if it's limited at its performance and you're trying to squeeze more out of your GPU, um, especially for a game like Warzone that is fairly CPU intensive, if you hit 100% at your CPU and then your GPU is trying to compensate, you're trying to squeeze more performance out of that, you're not necessarily going to get that performance because it's bottlenecking within the system. There's other components that can bottleneck as well, your motherboard, your RAM. I'm by no means an expert on bottlenecking per se, but I'm fairly familiar with the concept. And you know what? Running a low-end CPU with a high-end GPU, you're just going to limit yourself. So make sure your components are ready to be overclocked. Make sure they're ready to handle the performance of the game at whatever frames per second or resolution that you're going to be running at. And just keep in mind that that might happen. The third, the third tip is do not auto overclock. Do not take the shortcut. When you're overclocking, it's a fine tuned process. It's going to take time, but your time that you spend on it is going to yield amazing results. Yes. You might be able to kind of wing it and go right and skip a couple steps and go right from 15% to 30% and then your computer freezes. Um, you might be able to skip those little corners. I mean, I kind of did when I was first doing this, but I realized that if I spent the time really mess with the fine tuned pieces of it, I was able to squeeze a lot more performance out of Warzone. Fourth is do not expect this to be a complete game changer. I mean, if you're getting anywhere upwards of 10% performance increase in terms of frames per second, like that's pretty amazing. You might even get more if you have a lower end GPU and you're really trying to push it, you might even get a 20% increase. I uh, don't expect anything in the thirties or forties. Like this isn't like revolutionary technology. This is taking the current tech that you have and just squeezing a little bit more out of it to get that extra performance. So one thing I wanted to cover before jumping into some of the gameplay is this NVIDIA reflex low latency setting. There's a lot of misconceptions about the right setting here. And I wanted to just make this completely clear because it's really important. There's two different options. You can have it completely disabled. You can have it in enabled or you can have it enabled plus boost. I personally have it on enabled. And the reason that I have it, there's, there's a, there's a really key thing here. One setting is designed for you to be completely CPU bound and one setting is designed if you're GPU bound. So in my case, I have a pretty powerful CPU. I'm running on a Ryzen 7 5800X. So I never go above 50% CPU utilization. I'm always maxed out on my GPU. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this on enabled. And the reason you would have enabled plus boost is if your CPU was a lower end CPU or just it was getting maxed out and you still had room in your GPU performance, what you can do is when you do an enabled plus boost, say you're completely CPU bound, your graphics card is actually gonna make up the ground for your CPU and it's always gonna run at 100% to make sure that you're maximizing that extra performance that your CPU might not be able to handle. So if you have a CPU that's really powerful, go. there's a lot of tools you can test this. You can see your overall CPU usage when you're running Warzone. If you're not maxed out on your CPU, you do not need to run enabled plus boost. You can just run enabled. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions on about this. I mean, there's a lot of differing opinions, but this is what I've gathered. It's even listed right here on the right. You can see in CPU bound cases. You want to have that extra boost. I mean, the writing's on the wall here. Um, you can test it for yourself to see if you get different frames. I'm getting the best performance on enabled because my CPU is not even close to being maxed out, but I want to make sure that my GPU is always running at hundred percent, which it is. So next up, I'm going to show some gameplay. This is going to be roughly about five minutes of gameplay. If you want to go ahead and skip, you can go down to the chapter bars below in the timestamps and you can see the results. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be testing four different things. I'm going to be doing overclocked without NVIDIA filters on. I'll be doing non overclocked without NVIDIA filters on. Then I'll be turning the NVIDIA filters on without the overclock. And finally, I'm going to re overclock it with NVIDIA filters on and then I'll show the results. So I'm doing some pretty basic testing. I'm just trying to get as much movement as possible. I'm trying to go through, um, just trying to get any kind of little thing that's gonna change my variation and, and try to change my frames per second. I try to keep all four of these tests fairly similar. Like it's pretty hard when you're doing different movement and different effects and different graphics can really affect this. Um, but really my focus here is try to get four barely equal tests all in the same lobby with the same ping just to make sure that my latency is the same. There's nothing else affecting it. So what I will do is like, I'm actually going to go ahead and fast forward this a little bit. Uh, the tests are pretty simple. Um, I, I explained them before, but I really want to make sure that I'm getting equal testing and we'll show the results. So let's do it. So here's the results. And the reason I found these really astounding is that when you're running NVIDIA filters, you actually got a greater increase in frames when you're overclocked versus not running filters. Yes, if you're not running filters, you're always gonna get higher frames, no doubt. 
There's no way around that. But for me, I like better visibility in Warzone. I like being able to see my opponents. I like having a brighter, more vivid, more colorful background. That's just my personal preference. And here's where overclocking really works. If you want to run those NVIDIA filters, but you're not squeezing the performance you want to, you can see the writing's right on the wall. Like I was getting a 7% increase, almost 10 frames increase just from overclocking with NVIDIA filters as compared to like 2% without them. So, I mean, this is extremely useful. If you want to squeeze 10 more frames per second, if you're picky about frames like me, this is the perfect way to increase that performance. So that wraps it up for today's video. I really hope you enjoy the content. I'm by no means a PC building or overclocking expert. I fiddled around with it. I watched a ton of videos. I'm a big gamer. I love Warzone. And I found that this has worked for me. I was able to increase performance. My system is still stable. I'm not running into any crashing issues. You know what? If I can squeeze that extra 10 to 15 frames, I'm going to take it all day. If you have any questions, make sure you go down in the comment section below. Feel free to ask them. If you really like the content, you want more videos, subscribe, smash that like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Until the next time, peace.